Ahoy hoy, and welcome to the video. Today we are going to do another reading, but I'm talking to you first because it is set in a particular canon, and I don't want you to be super confused when we get to it. From the Nightfall canon. It is a, we'll say, Bloodborne and Fallen London inspired setting, and I've created a story which I enjoyed called He Walked a Crooked Mile, um, about... Um, Dr. Sumerian in this setting, just a completely different version of Dr. Sumerian. So um, I'll just give the standard Creative Commons license thing, even though it's my story and I do what I want with it. But um, He Walked a Crooked Mile. It was written by me, Dr. Sumerian, and you can find it on the SCP Wiki in a link in the description below. It is under a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 license. A long drop and a short rope was all that separated me from oblivion, and there was a sort of peaceful calm to the moment as the crimson sack went over my head. The crowd screamed its accusations, mostly true, but they seemed quieter now. Body snatcher, crypt thief, grave robber. It didn't matter that it was in the pursuit of science, that an entry at the University of Yarsborough said Mr. Sumerian, 65. No one cared that those 65 corpses had done more to further the cause of science than any amount of work I could have ever accomplished in my life elsewise. One day, soon, those screaming people would be saved by the knowledge I had helped provide, and I stood there in the ruby moonlight, secure in that solace, and the bottom fell out beneath me. The rope around my neck went tight. There was a crack, a flash of pain, and then there was nothing at all. This place had claimed another victim. The city of Desmond, though, rarely lets go of anything of value. There were flashes of consciousness, of pains unimaginable, and then silence again. The dreamlike state into which I fell was one of terror, and wonder. I'd struggle to breathe for a few moments, and then I'd see vague shapes of faces looking down at me, then nothing again. Oblivion. Over and over. In the brief moments of cognizance, I imagined that this was punishment for my life of wickedness. Then one day I awoke from oblivion for good. I was strapped to a table, raised high in the raining sky. I could feel the surge of electricity through my body. Lightning struck me a second time as I broke the bonds holding me down. I stank of burning flesh, formaldehyde, and ionized air. But I was alive. I was powerful. Still, these weren't my hands. My glasses were gone, but my sight was clear, so these were not my eyes. Yet, I was sure that this was my mind. I leapt from the raised platform, came crashing down almost eighty feet below, but the cobblestones cracked instead of my bones. No one pursued me into the night, but I ran anyway. I found myself in an alley I didn't recognize, the rain slowly subsiding. There, on the ground, in a puddle of murky, blood-red water, I saw my reflection for the first time. A great scar started at my scalp, continued through my nose and down my neck. The skin on the left side of my face was just a bit lighter than the rest of me, and a single red eye looked back. My other eye was hazel, just as unrecognizable, but at least not as strange. I tore at the loose tunic about my chest, and it came off in clumps. Soon I was able to see my skin. Everything was crisscrossed with stitching and scars. I sank against the nearby building and began to cry. There was no great punishment or reward on the other side, only oblivion. The pain I'd felt was wholly human. Men of science trying to piece me back together. And as I came to that realization, a man entered the alley with a grin. I must have seemed an easy mark for the cut purse. This one held the knife with some confidence, a practiced hand, 
had fought men like him in the trenches. But Sumerian had been too infirm to fight in the war. Ah, I saw it then. This wasn't entirely my mind, after all. The cat purse began to approach me. I stood up and looked at him. And as he took my full measure, I could see the pangs of fear in his eyes. Before he could contemplate his mistake, I moved like lightning. His head smashed into the brick wall with a wet splash. I looked down to find he'd stabbed me, just under someone else's ribcage, in someone else's heart. A death blow for anyone else. I pulled the knife out. I hoped to see myself bleed to death there on the cobblestones, but the only blood came gushing from the dead man in front of me as he slowly slid down the wall and slumped over. The wound closed immediately. The scars remained, but the hole over my heart was sealed. I considered this for a moment. Then I threw the man over my shoulder and made my way across the rooftops to Yarsborough. The university paid well for the cut purse's body. A new entry was made for me. The constructed man, the doctor called me. I believe it was meant as a joke, but I allowed it to pass without comment. I even persuaded the doctor to lend me a bed for the night and some clothing. When the whistles blew the next morning, I went back into the world. My wages paid for a meal. The good doctor from Yarsborough even rented me the room in secret in the Yarsborough clock tower. It wasn't hers to rent, but no one else was using it. And now I come and go in secret. I had curiosity to be sated. I returned to where I was made, but I found the building burned to cinders. The owner's names were in no public records. Perhaps this is my penance for some imagined slight. Perhaps a friend did this to save me from death. Perhaps I will never know who did this, or why. But for now, I rest atop the Yarsborough clock tower. A dull black bell, my constant companion. Spider cracked. Someone pieced it back together, but it will never ring again. And that suits me just fine. The good doctor has told me of a series of murders at the university. Some creature of the night or other has begun ripping people apart in the small hours. Cut purses pay the bills. The occasional tomb robbing buys my food. But how much could I get for the body of a true vampire? Or maybe a werewolf? Yes, I think I will hunt monsters tonight. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who has pledged at $100. It is nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I will see you all again on Thursday.